Hi, hello. So today we will talk about two-pointer coding pattern. We will again go with the same strategy. The first thing we will talk about when this coding pattern has to be used. What is that coding pattern? Then there are two more things we will talk about. The first is what is OOP approach, how we can make uh, like some function or some template that can be used in object-oriented programming if you're using Java or some other language. And we'll also talk about functional a way, a functional template, that how we can make a functional template and what are the higher order function that we can use for writing two-pointer coding pattern. And then finally, we will come to some template it won't be a hard-coded template that can change, that can have a little bit variation. Because in my all examples, like all solution, I will try to write all the code in functional way. And here I have already mentioned a few questions which we can do using two-pointer coding pattern. The, these functions, these, these these questions can be done with some different approach also a little bit, but they will give you a sense. They will ring the bell that they somehow map with the two-point coding pattern, and we can apply the same template and can solve them. Few of them I can just code like there are two sum longest substring without repeating character three sum threesome closest, foursome, merge two sorted list, and so and so, all of that. And here are the numbers which you can find in the lead code and you can practice. So first we will talk about when part. So when we have to use two-pointer coding pattern. In whenever you will see uh, some sorted array, array or might be some string to so some string or some sorted array. Second thing, in the question they were asking about uh, some set of elements, like you, they were asking about set of element. From set mean that one or two or a collection with some plus with some constraint. These three things. Let's suppose two sum is a good example for finding uh, element, like some arrays given, and they were asking, okay, try to find uh, two number whose sum is equal to um, four, let's suppose four. So we have to find this target. So what we can see that this two number, three, and four, uh, one and three, if we can, if we add them, we will get the result of four. And a collection might be, they can just say, okay, find uh, three numbers whose sum is equal to like A, B, C. And these three numbers whose sum is equal to, let's suppose 10 or something. So we have to find that. <laughs> what is about the constraint? The constraint is this, that when they say, find some three numbers whose sum is equal to this target. So target is a constraint. Target with operation, target plus operation. So when they are saying uh, sum of three numbers, three numbers is equal to uh, target, that is the constraint. So we, we talk about when we have to use and which sort of question we have to use two-pointer coding pattern. And what is this two-pointer coding pattern? Pretty simple. As already said, let's suppose we talk about one example and then we can apply the same uh, thought and it and can extract some template from it. Let's suppose there's a two-sum question. They said, we will provide you some number array like array of one, three, five, seven, ten, and 
they were expecting find some number whose sum is equal to 10. So target sum is, so target should be equal to 10. Now, the first thing we can look that this is sorted. So first condition met, it is a sorted array. Second condition, we can look that they were asking some collection, some set of numbers. They're saying find two numbers whose sum is equal to this target. Now they were asking for some set of numbers, set of elements from this array. So set condition is satisfied, sorted is satisfied, set is satisfied, and some constraint is there. That constraint is that sum, this operation, when you apply that on these two elements, you get this result. So all these three conditions set. So this is a two, uh, so all, everything, like all these conditions satisfied. Now, how? what is this two point encoding pattern? We will take a left from here. So in this example, one, three, five, seven, ten. We will take one pointer here, which is left, and we can take another pointer at the end, which is right. And now we will see um, that we will try to see that okay, this number is one, and we will say that this number is ten. We will sum them, and that will result answer eleven, which is greater than my target number 10. By looking at this condition, I would move one pointer either left or I will move right. So when I will move left, so when I will move left, it means that I am trying to find some bigger number. And when I move right backward, so I'm trying to find some minimum number. So it's a minimum target, that's a maximum target. So I'm increasing when I move the left and I'm decreasing when I move the right back. So this is bigger number. I can see that, okay, 11 is, this 11 is a bigger number. So I have to move my right backward. So the next step I will say right will move back. At this point, right is pointing here. Now I will again look for one plus seven, that is right, and this time I will say one plus seven is equal to eight, and eight is less than 10. This is our target. This is what we obtained, that is less than 10. So when we found something which is less than our target, we will move left to the right side, and in the next step we will move left to the next number, and okay the pointer will go here now we'll say 3 plus 7 is equal to 10 which is equal to all the target number and we got the result so we will say that left at index 1 this is the index and right at index 0 1 2 3 at index 3 that's the answer. This is a two-pointer coding pattern. Now we will talk about the next part that what is the object-oriented approach. Pretty simple. We will say uh, just make uh, get two variables which is left and you take it zero and war take it right the same way that you put your right here and left you will put at this point. So this is uh, these two points you will get and then you'll just iterate on all numbers. So uh, on all number you will iterate and here you will just move conditionally left or you will move right. So conditionally you will move them conditionally. This is object-oriented way of solving these questions or using the two-point encoding pattern. 
Now we will talk about functional way that was the functional approach to, to address such type of question. So before going into that, I will talk, try to talk about two higher order function that we will um, use while solving this question. The first thing is about zip with index and second we'll talk about full left. Zip with index is pretty simple that when we have some array rather I will take some different number here I, I will say string of a b c d. Zip with index mean that let's suppose you have an array and you are going to zip that. So you have A, B, C, D. It is an index zero. This is index one. This is index two, and this is index three. So just like a zip, they will say this is a zip here, 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 and here, and that's also the part of a zip. I will make it like that. This is like a zip, and here we have that zip button we will put it and we will zip, zip it both of them so it will just zip like that in this zipping what it will do it will say a is make a tuple with zero so you will get a zero and it will pick b with at index one and will make another tuple b one and it will pick c from here at index two we'll say c at two and D at three, it will zip them together and will make that D with three. This is the result you will get. Uh, uh, another list of uh, tuple with zipped value with its index. Now we'll talk about fold left. So fold left is what it does actually, it says Let's suppose you have an array and we say fold the same way that how when we say that, okay, this is some something and you have to fold it to fold left from fold. So from left, so we are going to fold it with left, but providing some, some initial values. So this is some accumulator. We'll say that this is initial value. So we say, uh, let's suppose zero. I want an initial value zero and in case this is empty still we will get zero and then we will say okay in the case we will say this is what is our accumulator which is uh, we can give its name let's what I can say ACC as an accumulator and he <coughs> here I will get this none and then I can use all operations here, whatever I like. How it works actually, this fold left. So if I will say, uh, let's suppose I say array and I say fold left zero and second operation is plus. I said, use this initial value and this initial value and apply the operation of each element with with that plus operation so it will do it will first pick that one and would apply that plus operation with initial value here so okay so it is it, it will pick that zero here the accumulator pick the first left from here which is one apply the operation and then it will go further and with the value obtained from here it will apply another the next value which is 2 and so and so and here it will say the value 4 so it is left indent intended yeah it's linked to left and uh, finally what it will do it will say 0 plus so it will say 0 plus 1 is result 1 and then 1 plus 1 plus 2 is equal to the answer 3 and 3 plus 3, 6, and then 3 plus 4 is, 6 plus 4 is 10. So this is the answer it will get finally. 
Uh, so this is full left. So these two functions we will use and mostly the, path, the template what we will use for functional code. How we will use that, we will say, let's suppose when some number are given, some array of nums, we will normally say zip with index and then we will say full left. In the full left, we, will, we can give any number of value here. So syntax of full left will be something something like this, if I will say def fold left and that fold left has u suppose the uh, u type and this accumulator is of type u that u means that you can use a tuple or you can tuple of a b c or simple a or some person so anything you can put of type u or anything so that will be the accumulator and it was expecting some operation that we have to use which will be considering to take u and type t t is the type of which list contains so it's some list that you are using in this case is uh, this array and this one operation that operation will say okay take u and t and the final result will be u and the return type of this is u uh, in this case, what will we do? What we, here, full left will take this accumulator here, the first value here you can provide, let's suppose zero, or you can say zero, zero, or one, that's a tuple, or you can say some person object here, or you can give some, uh, some empty string or anything you can provide here as an accumulator. And that will be the return type of this whole, whole function. And here, what we'll, we will normally use, we'll use some tuple. Mostly that will be used for left pointer. And that will be the answer, the sum that what we were looking at. So this is normally what we will do uh, in this question. And then we will go for some case. Uh, sorry, that will be left. And that would be, suppose, the sum, uh, that num and here will be the right. This right is actually because of the zip with index, because he make these nums, one, two, three, is at this level, it become a tuple of one with zero, two with one, and three with two. And at this level, at four left, uh, what it is doing, he is going with this accumulator and then we use this case and then at this level here in this part we will use all operation whatever we want. So here will be all operations and logic. Let me make it clean again and finally we will make this here and at that level we will perform some operation. Note that this right index will move, like it will go with each each iteration. We can't change that, that right. This right will change with each iteration. It won't change with, uh, by doing any of the, like by overview we'll say, okay, move it back or stop it there, no. Here, we have control. The accumulator, what we provide in the forward left, we have control that we can say, okay, increase, move the left further, or keep it here, or add it something, or don't add anything. So at this part, we have the control. We can change different with different values in each iteration. But that which we were getting in normal iteration, that won't change. That will keep that. That would change, but with normal flow we, we don't have control to say okay the right should go to index back or something though no. and uh, that's why some of the question will change this template and from here instead of using this zip with index and forward left we have to use recursion and i will explain when we were going for recursion or when we have to go with the zip with index and full left. 
I hope that will give some clear picture. If not, hopefully when we start working with the questions, all of them, that would make a clear picture that how two pointer coding pattern can be applied for solving uh, different questions. And we will solve all the questions using functional approach. Thank you. Bye.